What is going on everybody? Adam here with eTrailer. Today we're gonna to be going over a solution if you do not have a hitch or a bike rack on your roof to be able to get your bikes to and from the destination. Luckily, this one is extremely compact, fits in your trunk so it's easy to store. And this is gonna be the Thule Gateway 3. First thing we wanna to do to get it expanded is we are gonna have these levers on each side. We're gonna push those in and that's gonna make this arm come up like this. I found the right setting and we want to put it on our trunk just like this. And if you look closely, you can see we do have some numbers here. I'm going to use a seven. I found that to be the best fit for our Jetta here. Just a quick tip for you, if you fancy your paint job, I highly recommend just wiping it down just so a lot of that dirt and stuff isn't being pushed down onto your paint to make marks. So we did that. And another thing we need to do is, you notice this pad here, it's nice and wavy on the round end. We want that to be down. So rotate that around on both sides, get it into place. Then we can go ahead and start grabbing our straps here and hooking them on over top of this bar down like that, make sure it's nice and straight, hook it in, and then we do wanna give it a nice little tug just to make it nice and firm, just so it'll sit there on its own. And on the sides, we're gonna have two other straps. One's gonna be a black hook, the other one is going to be a gray hook. And notice how some of them, one's gonna go down and the other one's gonna go out. So the one that goes down, put it down, and the one that goes out, put it out. Pretty simple, straightforward. And again, we want to go ahead and tighten this up just to make it nice and snug. We will tug on these a little bit more once we get everything set into place. I'm going to go ahead and do the same exact thing on the other side. Now that everything is nice and secured into place, what is nice about this bike rack is we have little straps that are going to allow us to take all that excess, tie it up nice and neatly so it's not flapping in the wind. Next thing we want to do is these levers here. This is just gonna allow us to flip these up so we can use them. So all you gotta do is just flip that open and to get it nice and loose, you wanna twist it left a little bit, lefty-loosey, righty-tighty. And then it's gonna pop out and we want to make sure it's gonna be at least at an incline. If it's straight, that's fine, but we do not want them hanging down like this. So I like to get it a little bit of an incline like this. And as you can see, I still have a little bit of wiggle so what you want to do is start twisting this to the right until you get it to where it's nice and tight. That's pretty good. So I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. And the initial setup of this is going to be the longest just because you're going to get an idea of what numbers to put each of the settings on. But once you get that all figured out for the first time, it should be the same for the rest of the times you set this up. Now it's time for some bikes. We wanna make sure that our bikes aren't gonna be any heavier than 35 pounds. And also another thing to think about is how far away these bikes are spaced apart. So we're gonna have about seven inches from each bike and the spread between these two is gonna be about 12 inches. So for your kids' bikes, make sure we're gonna have a big enough gap right here to be able to get these on here. If not, you can go ahead and grab a bike adapter bar and that'll adapt it to make it fit this rack. Now let's take a look at the cradles. They are gonna take care of your bikes. You don't have to worry about them scratching anything and they are gonna have little grooves right here and that's gonna be for our bike cables so they're not smashing up against our frame. We do have an anti-sway cradle on the bottom here and that's gonna be covered as well with some rubber so that's not gonna scratch anything either and so are the straps. They are thinking of your bikes when they design this and I love that. So let's go ahead and get them all secured down just put them in here, pull it nice and tight. And it's gonna be the same exact thing for this one and our anti-sway cradle. Just to show you what the anti-sway cradle does, we do have a little bit of movement like this, and that is what this is for. So put this in like this, put it through, and this is gonna really just make sure that your bikes aren't really gonna make a whole lot of contact whenever you're starting and stopping, and I like that. 
So we have a bike lock for our bikes, but someone really still could come up and undo all the straps and take the whole rack with all the bikes with it. Be a little difficult to do, but it's possible. So Thule made a solution for that. We do have a locking strap that is not included with this bike rack, but you can pick it up here at eTrailer.com. All in all, this is definitely going to be a solution for you if you don't have anything on your roof or a hitch installed. Another thing I like about this is we can put it on multiple different vehicles. It's pretty versatile. So if you have multiple vehicles and some days you take one to go to the trails and others you take this to go to the trails, it's gonna fit on both. You can't really put a hitch on this car and then use that same hitch to put on another car. Even if it did fit, it's a lot of work. So this is definitely gonna be one of the easier ways to get your bikes to and fro. If we didn't answer all of your questions, I actually answer a couple of our coworkers' questions about this bike rack, so definitely stick around for that. What's going on, guys? Uh, just here to kind of answer some of your questions about the Thule Gateway Pro 3. This does come in a three and a two, so if you just have two bikes, go ahead and grab that one. If you want the three, grab this one. They're all the same. It's just one fits three, one fits two. Any questions? So how would the uh, trunk rack compare, say, to a hitch rack or a roof rack? Um, well, it just all just depends. I would say, obviously, this is going to be for those people who either don't want to put a hitch on their vehicle, whether they just don't want to install it, they don't want to pay someone to install it, or they don't really have a use for it besides bikes, or if there's just a, there's not a hitch for them for some reason, whatever that may be, or if they just don't want to mess with the roof. So let's just say you can't have a hitch on your car and you're not really wanting to have to lift your bike up and put it way up here. Um, that's probably the only reason why you would choose this over anything else. For my opinion, I would definitely just get a hitch just because you can do a lot with a hitch, whether it's carrying bikes or anything else. Um, but it gets the job done, but this is definitely, you only need to buy one thing for you to carry bikes with the other one. You need to buy a hitch. And then of course the bike rack. Um, but one thing I like about hitch bike racks is a lot of them have tilting capabilities. This one, you can't do it. So usually with a hitch mounted bike rack, you can get to the trunk. This one you can't. So that is one downfall to this. Also, if you're really, really picky about your paint job like sometimes people get a little nervous about these hooks um but they are coated so you don't have to worry about them scratching too bad but um if you don't how good really, is that coating um yeah it's is not it, super is thick it really soft no i wouldn't say it's soft um but it's definitely going to be softer than your clear coat in your paint so if they had to battle uh this would give first Okay. So this, this really is for the customer that doesn't have a hitch and probably doesn't have a roof rack either. It just lets them take their bikes and, and then they don't have to worry about the other accessories. Right, right. I answered a question the, on Thursday, I believe it was a Chrysler Sebring. It's a convertible and he didn't want to get a hitch installed and he was looking for a rack. Obviously you can't get a roof rack on a convertible and he just didn't want to get the hitch for whatever reason, just his preference. So this was the only one, uh, trunk mounted bike racks, the only way to get the bikes to and fro. Um, I mean, I like this one, but really comparing it to other trunk mounted bike racks, it's all the same in my opinion. Some of them have some of the other features that others would want, but with this one, you know, you have pretty much everything you really need to get your bikes on. Okay. In terms of installation, when you start looking at all the trunk racks, how does this one install compared to some of the others? Is it easier, harder, or the same? I think they're all the same. I mean, you're going to have some straps up here. You're going to have some straps down low, and you're going to have straps going to the side. They're all hooks. You always have to hook them in like this. Um, I would just, I definitely say that they're all pretty much the same. It just depends on what look you're going for, uh, what kind of neat features you want like this one comes with a cable lock for your bikes um but then you can buy a strap lock separate so obviously someone can come up here and undo all these straps to take the whole rack off with your bike but if you have the you already have the bikes locked down 
all you really need to do is just grab um, a locking strap. So some of them offer that, some of them don't, some come with them, some of them don't. This one doesn't. But comparing them to that, it's it's all the same installation, really. So I think it would just come down to features and what you really want. I really say I will say, um, considering cleanup, whenever it comes with the straps, it's kind of nice that this comes with it. Mm -hmm. I notice that there aren't that many of the uh, the uh, these kind of bike racks that have that, so that's kind of nice. Yeah, they do come with these little straps to keep it all. Cause you have plenty of straps left over once you tighten everything down. So they come with these, which is nice. So it looks good and it's not gonna be flapping around in the wind. So for the ones that don't have those straps, what do you do with that excess? Just wrap it and tie it or? Do you just what you do with the strap, pretty much. Or you can grab some, I know we have some here at E-Trailer. It's just what you want, what you want to do with it. Rubber bands. Yeah. Yeah. Buyers quick ties, you can do all sorts of stuff. Okay. Uh, this one mentioned so when you're that- talking Sorry, oh, man. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just wanting to stay with the ease of installation uh, theme we had there. So if you look at like the Thule Raceway Pro, that's a much easier to install. Uh, you got two less straps. Um, they're actually not straps. They're cables. Um, I've actually got an older version of that, and it works really well. My daughter uses it on her Chevy Cruze. And it's a, a great option for a trunk mount back rack that installs really quickly and you don't have all that extra strap material to tie up and and uh, handle every time. What about the straps? Do they seem sturdy, Adam? I mean, yeah, they're, they're made in nylon. They're going to handle over time. They're not going to cracking or fraying. Um, you, I like how it has a decent amount of excess because then you can really kind of like wrap around your hand a little bit to get a little bit more if your hands are sweaty or something like that. Um, but no, they're going to hold up well over time. It's definitely not going to be the first thing to go. You're going to get a lot of years out of this. It says that it uh, fits over most spoilers. Um, do you find that to actually be the case? Um, I have, we don't have a spoiler on here now, but, uh, if you can see this little contoured edge here, so it all depends on how you really set it up. One, they give you a little curve, so that'll kind of help. But also, there's a lot of different ways we can do it. We have adjustments over here, so we can make it a little bit closer or a little bit wider. So as of right now, I have it to the very, very end of our trunk here. But then down here, I have it right at the edge of the bumper and the back. But if you needed to, you can pull these off and you can maybe just kind of close it a little bit more to make it to where it'll come up a little bit higher because you can have it like I have here on the bottom or you can have it up against the trunk. So I have it as wide as it can go, but you can have it a little bit narrower, which will gain you a little bit more access. So there's a lot of adjustments to fit whatever spoiler you may have. If you have a big old racing spoiler, it's probably not for you. you get a hitch and a bike rack, but, uh, but yeah, most of them, unless you have something that's really, really aggressive, like anything aftermarket, I would definitely be weary about it. But anything OEM, uh, unless it's really, really big sport wing, all these adjustments are going to really help you out with that. Okay. <clears throat> also, I wanted to ask you about the distance between the cradles. Uh, on this particular rack, it, I know it's seven inches, which is longer than most. How, how much extra... Uh, room does that actually give and how easier does that make it to take your bikes on and off um i mean really it that's in my opinion it's pretty much just to kind of give you more gap between so they're not knocking together as much um usually uh whenever there's not like an anti-sway cradle you can put the bikes on either way like the handlebars facing this way or the handlebars facing that way with this one the anti-sway cradle is like it's opposite every single one. So usually, you know, seven inches is good, but if you offset them like I have here, the handlebars aren't going to hit. So it's plenty of space. I don't really think it makes it easier to take it on and off, really. Um, but it definitely is a benefit to have for your bikes. Just more gap, the better. And since it's only three bikes, we're not really that far off the back of our vehicle anyway, so that's good. 
it doesn't really help take your bikes off, but it's really, really convenient for, you know, whenever you're stopping and starting so your bikes aren't clanking together. I have seen some uh, people complain that on racks where the cradles are closer together, they can't actually get, like if it's a three bike rack, they wouldn't be able to get three bikes on. So they they could only get two on, one on the, the far end and one on the nearest cradle. Uh, have you seen that happen before? Yeah, so this is the problem. So this is their problem. Uh, whenever you're putting it on and off, obviously this is the widest part of your bike. So if you have something that is kind of conflicting with that, like right now, like I can rotate it a, a little bit, but only to a certain point before I kind of have to pull it back and figure out what's going on with that. So the pedals are definitely what's causing that. So you kind of have to think about it, you know, like if I was to put another one on here, I would obviously have it, it facing this way so that the gearing and the pedals are going to be farther this way. So that's something to keep in mind, but sometimes you can't really avoid it. So what I do is kind of, you got to mess with these to make it to where they really like fit together. Um, but really, even if we had these cradles spread out like 10 inches, you're probably still going to run into that. Mm. It just depends on how long your pedals are. Like these pedals are relatively short because they're for the racing shoes that you click onto them. So they're not as wide, but, uh, I would say you're always going to kind of run into that, but just keep in mind what kind of bikes you plan on putting on. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Any other questions? I don't have any other questions. Does anybody else? Well, I think I think you did real good. Um, it, it looks like a good solid rack and a great solution if you don't have a roof rack or a, or a hitch in your car. Absolutely, absolutely. It's going to solve a lot of problems. Yep. All right. Well, thanks. Thanks for taking the time to show us that. Well, everyone, that just about does it for a look at the Thule Gateway Pro, and I'm Adam with the Trailer.